Hey, welcome back. Today we're designing a corner cafeteria, one that feels open, warm, and connected to the street. It's surrounded by low buildings and constant movement, so the challenge is to make something that truly invites people in. We'll go through the full process, from the first sketch to modeling to the final design, and see how a few simple gestures can completely transform an ordinary intersection into a place people actually want to stop at. Alright, so here's our site. It's a 20 by 20 meter plot, about 400 square meters total, sitting right on the corner of a busy intersection. So the first thing I'm thinking is, this is a visible spot, which means whatever we built here needs to feel inviting from every direction. Before I start sketching anything, I always like to set a few guiding ideas. When designing a space like this, the goal isn't just to fill the corner, it's to shape an experience. So let's go over the main principles I'm keeping in mind as I design. Respect the scale. If you look around, most of the buildings are one or two floors high. So going taller than that would break the rhythm of the neighborhood. A cafeteria shouldn't feel monumental, it should feel approachable, so we'll keep it low, human scale, and right at street level. Embrace geometry. Now, corners are really powerful. They naturally pull your attention, and I want the building to respond to that. So I'm sketching something that opens up to both streets. Almost like open arms welcoming pedestrians in. A good cafeteria doesn't turn its back to the city, it invites it in. Integrate nature. This area doesn't have much vegetation, so I want to make greenery a core part of the design. Transparency and connection. For the ground floor, I want to keep it as open as possible. Big glass panes, maybe pivot doors, so people walking by can see what's happening inside. And for materials, I'm thinking brick for texture, wood for warmth, and glass to keep it open. Alright, with those ideas in mind, let's start shaping the form. I'm jumping into Rhino, and the first thing I'm going to do is set the height of our building. And since we want people upstairs to enjoy some nice views, we'll go for the two levels. I'll start by extruding the side footprint up to 7 meters. Now you'll notice I'm using the entire geometry of the site. In this case, the local regulations actually allow us to build up to the edge. So we can really take advantage of that corner. That also helps us create a natural curved gesture that responds directly to the intersection. Remember, this building is all about connection. We want to invite people in, make them feel welcome, and one of the best architectural gestures for that is an arch. Whenever you see an arch, it almost pulls you through, right? So let's start introducing those. I'm using the arch tool here in Rhino and beginning with the right hand side. That side is 20 meters long, so a single huge arch would feel too heavy and out of scale. Instead, I'm dividing it into two equal sections, using the midpoint to keep everything symmetrical. I'm also leaving a bit of space at the top, a breathing zone above the arches. We'll have a slab running across there later, so we don't want things to feel cramped or compressed. This spacing helps the form breathe and keeps the proportions elegant. Alright, now let's move on to this other side, the one facing the main road. This is the most visible facade. People driving by and pedestrians passing along this street will see it first. So it needs to feel open and expressive, but still consistent with the rest of the design. So here I'm drawing a semi-arch to open up the geometry on this side. It's softer than a full arch but keeps the same welcoming gesture. Once that curve is in place, I'm matching its height to the other arches to maintain good proportions and rhythm across the facade. Now let's talk about vegetation. I want the greenery to grow seamlessly around the building and even spread a bit over it, almost like the architecture and the plants are working together, blending both levels into one continuous experience. To do that, I'm going to let the vegetation follow a semi-arch form, the same language we've been using throughout the design. So I'll draw a semi-arch aligned with our existing geometry one that crowns the entrance and completes the gesture we already created there. Next, I'll offset that arch slightly to give the plant some space to grow. Now you can really see how the arch design ties everything together. Alright, now let's take care of the terrace. Up here we obviously need a roof, but we also want to leave part of the space open, so people can actually feel like they're outside, enjoying the view toward the main road and the surrounding. So the area closest to the road is the one we'll leave open. That way, people sitting here have a stronger connection with the exterior. Now, on the back side, I'm grabbing this flat surface 
and extruding another floor to create our roof volume. But since we want to keep the design language consistent, I'm adding the shape of an arch on this upper level, just like we did on the ground floor. Once that's in, I'll trim the outer face using the gumball cut tool, leaving only the roof slab itself. Now we can go ahead and add a handrail around the open edge, something light and minimal, so the view remains open and uninterrupted. Great, so at this point our design is almost ready. The last step is to bring it to life with the materials. The predominant one will be brick. It gives that cozy, grounded feeling we want. For the hunches and flooring, I'm using wood, just to add warmth and variety. Using old brick everywhere would make it feel too monotonous. And for the structural elements, like the columns and the window framing, a bit of black metal adds strength and contrast without overpowering the design. Finally, after adding a few details, some coffee tables, chairs, and a bit more modeling refinement, we've got our final design ready. A small corner turned into a place full of life. The arches open towards the city, the terrace connects people to the sky, and the vegetation ties everything together, creating a smooth transition between nature and architecture. It's simple, warm, and human. A space that invites you to slow down, have a coffee, and just be part of the street. And that's it. Our corner cafeteria is complete. I hope you enjoyed seeing how the design came together step by step. If you want to transform your 3D renders into our signature Emunarch style, or check out the exact prompt, 3D model, and base render we use for this project, you can find all of that on our Patreon. The link's right below. Thanks so much for watching, and if you'd like to see more design explorations like this, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.